Pauline Hanson's campaign has put out a video that includes some pretty serious allegations of voter fraud in past elections. The video is a caricature of Penny Wong delivering soup to a COVID-infected Anthony Albanese and the pair scheming to cheat the election. Now, the Australian Electoral Commission wasn't too happy about it and asked social networks to remove the video from their platforms. Most of them obliged, but not before it got at least 200,000 views. Pauline Hanson has since refused to pull the video down from her website and on Facebook said sometimes the truth hurts as a reason for keeping it up. So let's go through Hanson's claims one at a time and see how close to the truth this video actually gets. These are postal votes under the names of dead people, fake identities, some were stolen out of letterboxes. Now according to the AEC, there is no evidence of postal vote applications being received under the names of deceased Australians. They also say they receive regular updates on births, deaths and marriages to take dead Australians off the electoral roll. The ASC also verifies postal votes before they're sent out and again when they're returned and will reject any postal vote that they can't match to the electoral roll. So given that the AEC regularly scrubs its electoral roll of dead people and has verification checks in place, it's pretty hard to add a dead person's name to a postal vote, which explains why there's no evidence of this ever happening. The Australian Electoral Commission don't require ID. Really? Of course not. That would be racist. Okay, one, not requiring ID at a polling booth has nothing to do with racism. And two, the AEC have other safeguards in place to stop anyone from voting more than once. When you enrol to vote, the AEC adds it to their electoral roll. Each election, the AEC sends certified lists of voters to their officer in each electorate, who's called a Divisional Returning Officer, or DRO. That means your name and address will only appear on the lists at the polling stations in your electorate. So let's say Cheetah X wants to vote for their preferred candidate twice. When Cheetah X goes to vote, they're required to give their name and address. The officer will then mark their name on that list. Now because Cheetah X is cheating, they decide to go to another polling station in their electorate a few hours later. And the officer there will also mark their name on their list. After the election, all the paper lists are cross-referenced to check for multiple marks against names. So since Cheetah X voted twice, the AEC can now see there's two marks against their name. And if the result is close, the AEC moves quickly. But what if that second mark is just a mistake? Like a smudge on paper or the electoral officer accidentally crossing out the name? Well, the AEC teams in each electorate manually check those scanning reports and remove accidental cases. But Cheetah X wasn't a mistake. They intentionally voted twice. So now what? Well, their name doesn't get eliminated it remains on the list of apparent cases of multiple voting and is escalated for further investigation. The DRO will then write to those voters to seek details on whether, when and where they voted. If Cheetah X decides to just ignore the DRO's letter or does reply but with an insufficient explanation, the DRO will then take the next step, referring Cheetah X and any other apparent cases of multiple voting to the Australian Federal Police. The AFP will do their own investigation, and if they have reason to suspect Cheetah X deliberately voted twice, which they did, they'll refer the matter to the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions for prosecution. Now, these safeguards mean that even without presenting ID at a polling station, the AAC have pretty robust ways of tracking would-be cheats. The 2010 election was won by less votes than the number of people that admitted to voting more than once. As the AEC says, this doesn't make sense. And that's because that's just not how our system works. Our elections aren't determined by who wins the most votes overall, or what we call popular voting, but who wins the most electorates. For example, in the 1998 elections, Labor's Kim Beasley won the popular vote. But John Howard actually won the election because his party won more seats. The same thing happened in the 2010 elections. Tony Abbott actually had more popular votes, but Julia Gillard won because she was able to get enough seats to form minority government. Now, according to the AEC, in no electorate in all the federal elections since 1901 has the final margin been larger than the number of possible multiple votes. That means even in cases where multiple votes were detected, they were never enough to influence the final result. This was further clarified by an AEC spokesperson who said, there is no evidence that the level of apparent multiple voting in Australia has ever been sufficient to overturn the margin 
in any one contest. Last election, there were thousands of people that voted more than once, and only about 20 of those people were investigated, and no one's ever been convicted of voter fraud. Again, this skews the facts. We now know the process of how the AEC catches multiple voters, and this process was followed to a T in 2019. In that election, the AEC sent just over 2,100 letters to voters whose names appear to have been marked off the electoral roll more than once which equates to roughly 14 possibilities of multiple voting in each electorate. Out of that 2,100, only 24 were referred to the AFP. And the AEC confirmed that in no electorate in the 2019 election did the number of possible multiple votes exceed the winning margin of the elected candidate. So even with detecting 2,100 possibilities of multiple voting in the last election, with only 24 of them being referred to the AFP, it made no difference to the outcome. So is there even a shred of accuracy to any of the claims made in Pauline Hansen's video? The short answer, no, not at all. If you like this fact check and you're enjoying the independent journalism we're bringing you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and download our app.